Rick Fields for Cascade Sports. Who do we have here? Chris Carter, Aaron Bottleman. Guys, tell me a little about the game today. Well, we knew it was going to be a good game coming in. They had a better seed. We just wanted to come in here and basically prove everybody wrong because everybody thought they was going to beat us. They didn't think we stood a chance with Garfield, and we proved it wrong like we were supposed to. Yeah. Um, they. Uh, we just feel like we just feel like as a team, we didn't get the love we should have been shown during the normal season because we won like seven straight at the end of the season and got no recognition for it. So basically, we coming into the tournament with the mentality of uh, taking all the top teams out because we feel like we should have been acknowledged more and recognized more for what we do. So if we got it, if we gonna get respect, we gotta earn it basically. Okay. So come down to. Um, me and my Tom was reading the statistics that for the season coming in here, and um, Chris, you had uh, about 300 points and you averaged 14 points a game. Aaron, you had, uh, I think it was 295 and you averaged around 13. Uh, guys, tell me a little about y'all seniors now, right? Tell me a little bit about y'all's transition from when y'all was a freshman until now y'all seniors. Oh, man, as soon as we got to the high school, we just started taking L's. Man, we had a rough couple years. And after last year, we lost to Cleveland Heights on a buzz. Well, we missed the buzzer beater by three. And right after that, I just decided I didn't want my senior year to go out like that. So me and him got in the gym. We was in the gym every day working AAU. If it wasn't AAU, we was in the gym working on drills. Mm-hmm. Chris? Yeah, and like, what he, just like what he said, um, I didn't play varsity my ninth grade year. He did, but and that, and that like hurt because it was like me and him played all the time together, and it was just like the first year we didn't play together. So that summer, I started working, and then I got on varsity. I didn't start for a while. And ever since then, we've just been losing. And, you know, after a while, you just get tired of it and you figure out what you need to do to become a better team and what you got to do. And me and him had the game plan to step up and become actual leaders because last year we wasn't, we didn't, we weren't real vocal, mm. both, neither one of us. And this year we decided to step up and become actual leaders because senior year we just decided we can't go out as that Beffer team, the same Beffer team from three years ago. Okay. Chris, I've been watching you, man, on, on the court. And it seemed like you were like a bully on the court, man. You be <laughs> elbowing guys and stuff, man. Tell me a little about your game. What kind of player do you think you are? Are you a finesse player? Are you a rough house, a banger, or what, man? I kind of know what the answer going to be. But um, <laughs> tell me, I want to hear your, your words. You know, uh, I like to play with power because, um, you know, you always get told when you're my size, it's, uh, it's always – People like I could find anybody his height, you know what I'm saying. But I want to, I want to have a way to stick out from other players my size and got my type of talent. And I just play strong. I play like you said. I like to bully around. If I can, if I think you're smarter than me, then you're gonna be my son. For the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna son you, basically. Oh, okay. You know? so, Cause. I don't. I don't. If I feel like if you don't, if you don't be the aggressor, you gonna get. You gonna get aggressed. You gonna right. be the one to get pushed around. Exactly. So, and we'll, with our coaches, we taught to get gritty. Okay. So that's how it's gonna be. I, I noticed against uh, what was it, Shaw, and you was elbowing the guy. <laughs> and the guy just backed up, man. He didn't elbow you back, man. So. Them type of guys you just take advantage of, him. Huh? Yeah, I mean, if you're not going to push me back, then I'm going to keep pushing you until, okay. you until I mess your game up. I'm going to get in your head. If I can get into somebody's head, then he mine for the rest of the night. Okay. Uh, Edelman, same question for you. What kind of player do you think you are, man? <laughs> I mean, I, I like to play with confidence. Like, wait, I got an edge on my shoulder because a lot of people tell me I can't do a lot of stuff because I'm only 5'10". I mean, it's always a bigger guard, so I just like to have that mentality that can't nobody stop me. And if I feel like I got you leaning one way, I'm gonna do what I want to do with you. And and just like and that just comes with the fact that we've been losing for the last three years. You get tired of losing, and you gotta figure out what you gotta do to change that. And I've been real passive these last three years, being the one being aggressive. So I decided to take it in my hands senior year and push some people around. Do the same thing that these older dudes been doing to me. <laughs> okay. All right, last question. Who was y'all's favorite player in the pros or in college? i say my favorite player in college is either between Trey Burke and Tate Jones from Garfield. Mm -hmm. And my favorite player that was in the pros was Allen Iverson. What did you like about his game? 
he was basically a little guard like myself, and he just did what he wanted to. He was so quick and got where he wanted to do, got where he wanted to, and did what he wanted. So do you try to incorporate some of his moves and some of his assets on, on your, your game? Sometimes. Okay. Chris, same question with you. What's your best asset? I mean, uh, who you like my best? My favorite college player is Trey Burke. Because Trey he like my height, and he aggressive. Uh -huh. And uh, my favorite NBA player is LeBron. What do you like about his game? He he's six eight, he's six eight, six nine, and he can do whatever he wants. But at the same all. time, he show love to his teammates, and he pass the ball, and he he's just an all around player. And that's what I'm trying to work on myself, becoming an all around player, you know. So all right, and that's why out. and that's why um, I put more work into my defense because he real big on defense, you know. So right. let's get to that next level. That's what you gotta do. Okay, shout outs. Shout out to. My team, squad, my, family, my brother, mm. squad, um, my mom for believing in me, my dad for pushing me every day when we work out, even though we have ups and downs, and my brother. Names, you want to put your names on it? Uh, my dad, Aaron mm. Bidelman Sr., my okay. mom, Valerie McKinley, okay. my sisters, just everybody that's around me supporting me for real. Okay, Chris. And my mother, Yolanda Starks, I want to... Uh, Give her a big shout out because being a mother living with me, I know it's tough. I know it's tough, and she got to deal with me day to day. So special shout out to my mom. Shout out to my dad, Chris Carter Sr. Cause he pushed me. He, if it wasn't for my dad, I don't know where I would be with basketball. Shout out to Randy White, my AAU coach. If it wasn't for him, I don't know where I'd be with basketball neither. My team, you know, because you know, they're having a rough. First half of the season, you know, you're trying to be a leader and then you don't do too much for your team in the beginning. You know, these dudes kept me up, you know what I'm saying? These dudes push me every day at practice and they keep me level headed, you know. So I just love all of them for that. And special shout outs to my two brothers, Aaron Bidelman. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and Wooski. <laughs> you know. Okay. But, you know, without, without your family and your peoples around you, you know. You ain't nothing, you know. These are people that teach you up. My, especially Pri Priola, he like a second father to me. You know, he pushed me just as.